has at least partially moved on from some of the functional atrocities that we saw in the intro here, but this bastardized idea of functional fitness, it still exists today, or at least something similar to it. Perhaps the most prolific example of all currently being the infamous Dr. Joel the Troll Seedman, who terrifyingly enough seems to actually be taken somewhat seriously on Instagram. And I could be wrong about that, but you don't amass thousands of likes per post without at least a moderate contingency of people giving large credence to what you say. So it would seem that functional fitness in all its bastardized glory is quite alive and well and thriving. And today, in, in light of that, I'm going to give you guys my top three reasons why I don't like it. <laughs> And just real quick guys, if you're in the market for a top-notch meal prep company, then be sure to check out Flex Pro Meals and use code on Kiri Elite for 20% off your order. The link is in the description. The food's legit, it usually arrives in just a couple days, they have a bunch of different high protein meal options, and it's a really easy and convenient way to help keep your diet and your macros on track. And now, back to your regularly scheduled program. Let's kick things off strong with reason number one. And just address the elephant in the room before anybody gets snarky on me because functional training is not the same thing as training functionally. I'm about to blow your mind, right? Because I'm sure that some of you are sitting there saying, Alec, you are a functional nut, a functional fitness nut yourself. You're LARPing, <laughs> LARPing as an athlete and shit like that. <laughs> Look, man. I can't possibly be functional, I'll tell you that straight, because I am the most dysfunctional motherfucker that you've ever met. Now, I like to make a distinction between functional training and training functionally, right? It's not just semantics, as we'll see in just a minute. We see people like Athlean X and Joel the Troll, Seedman, and they purportedly train athletes. I mean, I guess they do, but, but they take these methods, which I'm not going to argue the, the efficacy or inefficacy of those methods for the, the sake of athletics, athletic performance today, because dissecting those methods is a whole other video onto itself. So let's just roll with that idea. And so, so you have guys like that. They use these methods that are supposedly designed to enhance athletic performance and resilience on the playing field. They're, they're designed to be used by a population who already engages in a lot of running and jumping and stopping and starting and pivoting and cutting and falling and getting back up and, and rumbling and tumbling and rolling around and all that other good shit, right? Chaotic movement in general, you know, athletic shit. And then they take these methods designed for this specific population and they mass market them on social media onto a population of lay people who don't do these things. And so even if 
they had any value to begin with for the former population, for the athletes, then that value would undoubtedly be non-existent when it comes to the latter population for lay people because they're two completely different groups who do completely different things. And so kind of conflating those training methodologies or conflating those populations and trying to overlap that training between those two populations, it actually makes almost no sense to begin with. And this is something that you see all the fucking time, especially on social media. It's literally Athlean X's slogan, train like an athlete, even though I'm marketing all of this shit to people who aren't athletes, right? Do the things that athletes do to get better at being athletes, dot, dot, dot. But to what end? So the distinction that I like to make between functional fitness and people like myself, who I would say train functionally, is that functional fitness tends to be those bizarro world, largely pointless gimmicks that you see from the likes of people such as Joel the Troll Seedman. Whereas training functionally is simply the concept of encouraging people who are not already athletes to do the types of things that all athletes already do by default. Not the supplementary stuff that they do in the gym, but instead the athletic stuff that they do by default on the playing field. So taking your average Joe who just lifts weights and then encouraging him to actually also run and jump and tumble and roll and cut and pivot and stop and start and all the other things that athletes already do by default simply by nature of playing sport. That to me is training functionally whereas functional fitness is again going back to that idea of LARPing as a catcher on a fucking BOSU ball. So I hope that that distinction makes sense to you guys. Much of this functional stuff is pure gimmick that serves only itself, but doing athletic things, training functionally, is something that everybody can benefit from. Reason number two. Functional training overemphasizes balance and stability. So we watch these functional fitness characters and pretty much everything they do, it involves some kind of excessive balance or stability component, right? It's basically a meme at this point. And that really seems to be the bread and butter of the method, at least as far as I can tell, for for some of the more popular characters in the game. You're either standing on one leg in a compromised position, you're standing on a BOSU ball, you're using asymmetrical loading, you're using a super wobbly implement like a, a what is it called a hurricane hurricane bar I can't even remember bamboo bar whatever the hell it's called or you're doing some combination of all these things you're throwing all the bands on you're standing on one leg you're closing your eyes and you're spinning in fucking circles right so if you challenge someone's ability to balance or stabilize yes they will automatically think that whatever they're doing is hard no matter how pointless it may be because it is going to feel hard but There's a major problem with this ideology, and that is when you challenge balance and stability kind of at the expense of everything else is how that goes. You you automatically inhibit force production, right? So if we add a large balance component to everything that we do, we are by default not strength training anymore. That, That means that these exercises and these movements are not going to yield very much in the way of muscle hypertrophy or improved force production, which are the two major benefits of strength training. Now, I'm not saying that these methodologies are wholly without value, but I am saying that they are often utilized or presented in a way that is highly disproportionate to the value they confer. Basically, if Joel the Troll Seedman is your primary source of fitness information, then you're probably going to be doing some really dumb shit in the gym way more often than you should be doing really dumb shit in the gym. Because frankly, most people can already stand upright and maneuver themselves around to a pretty sufficient degree. They have been challenging their balance and their stability their whole lives from the moment that they learned how to walk. They don't lack balance. Even people who fall don't really necessarily lack the arbitrary concept of balance. What they more likely lack is an adequate force production response. The ability to produce forces to counteract the things that might make you fall. Balance is defined as keeping something in a steady position so that it does not fall. How do you keep your body steady? The muscles do it 
by rapidly producing forces that counteract those that would otherwise offset you, typically in response to unpredictable stimuli, right? And so even somebody who's really good at standing on one leg while blindfolded on a BOSU ball at 3.33 p.m. on the third Tuesday in March can still easily lose their balance when they encounter something unpredictable, such as slipping on a patch of ice or getting rammed into by somebody. The, the, the sorts of things that you can't predict, that you can't prepare for, that you can't actually train because standing on one leg blindfolded on a BOSU ball at 3.33 p.m. on the third Tuesday in March only makes you better at standing on one leg blindfolded on a BOSU ball at 3.33 p.m. on the third Tuesday in March. And so ultimately these people that partake in this type of training would actually probably see more overall benefit in their lives both now and later on down the road in the long run but by simply using traditional strength training methods and increasing their ability to produce force while adding some muscle to their frames along the way. If they did that, they'd be less likely to fall over when they're 80 years old if they simply had stronger muscles that could produce adequate force and counteract the forces that might make them fall. Strength and lean mass, as another benefit, are also attributes that are positively correlated with all-cause mortality. So that's all good things. Building up those attributes is all good things, all good stuff. But playing catcher on a BOSU ball, that's like preparing for a 100-meter dash by running on the moon. It's fucking stupid. And finally, reason number three, functional training makes people holier than thou. If what that guy is doing is functional, then what that other guy is doing must be dysfunctional, right? If one thing's functional, then conversely, another thing has to be dysfunctional, or at the very least, it must lack some inherent level of utility or practicality. What I'm doing over here is morally superior to what you're doing over there because I'm using my body the way that nature intended for it to be used or something like that. But basically, it creates an elitist mindset that causes people to turn their noses up at other methodologies, other methodologies that very well have their own value and their own place when it comes to achieving certain goals. And that's a shame because personally, I think that there is some level of value to nearly every single fitness methodology that is available. And this is a message that I've tried to convey on this channel in recent years. A place for everything so long as everything is in its place. The, the problems arise when certain methodologies get blown out of proportion to their own value, used in ways that are disproportionate to the value that they confer for a particular goal. In the case of functional fitness, what we often see is people people get sucked into that ideology, but they're people who really just, they want to move better, they want to feel better, they want to be a little bit stronger, and, and in general, they just want to be more overall physically capable, right? That's basically the prototype of what I would consider functionality to be. So if functionality is what I'm after, all those, those generalized traits, then it makes sense that I should pursue functional fitness, doesn't it? Except the problem is functional fitness, as we all know it, it doesn't really accomplish any of these goals. Depending on the purveyor that you happen to be following, you might get some balance training, maybe some mobility work, but that's generally about as far as it goes. So what about everything else? What about that, that comprehensive picture of overall fitness that people are actually looking for? People who get sucked into this, this ideology are actually looking for. Well, they often unwittingly get shafted in that regard. They don't really get stronger or faster. They don't really improve their conditioning. They don't really build power and they don't really become more physically capable either because they're ignoring so many components of what should be considered overall fitness, overall functionality, right? They, they don't build these traits up in any sort of a comprehensive fashion. All they really do is get indoctrinated into this cult of moral superiority. I'm training like an athlete, bro, and that is way more deep and way more nuanced than training like a big dumb meathead. You guys get the idea. So am I saying to throw out all these functional fitness ideas and methods? No. Like I said before, like I have said throughout this entire series, just because there are aspects of something that I don't like 
doesn't mean that there aren't positive aspects to that thing as well. That's kind of been the point of this entire series is to dissect those negative aspects from those positive aspects so that people can get a fuller picture, a fuller idea of how all of these ideologies and method methodologies can serve them, right? There is a place for everything as long as you remember to keep everything in its place. As long as the methods are congruent with the goals and, and things that contribute majorly to those goals are highly emphasized, things that contribute mildly or moderately to those goals are mildly or moderately emphasized, and things that don't contribute to those goals are not emphasized at all. As long as you keep those factors in check, then you can get you can derive value from nearly any training methodology or ideology. In my own case, I do actually use some of this functional shit myself. Just take a look at these planks, for example. They look dumb as fuck, right? They're functional as hell, man. I even have clients use some of this stuff if it's applicable. I have a client right now. He's rehabbing an ankle injury, and I literally have him balancing on one leg on a BOSU ball, something I was making fun of throughout this entire video. Because a place for everything and everything in its place. But fuck your moral superiority, man. All these terms, they're kind of arbitrary anyway. If you want general overall performance and health and longevity and a style of training to suit that goal, that comprehensive fitness goal, then follow the Bioneer. Follow his, his, his training ideas or follow something like my hybrid athlete concept, which is a similar idea. And I'll link that below in the description for those who want to check it out. Anyway, that about wraps it up for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. And I hope that even if you disagree with some of or most of what I'm saying here, that you're able to find some useful tidbits to extract from the overall message. But with that, I'm curious to hear what everybody else's thoughts are. What do you guys think about functional fitness? Is it the best thing since sliced bread? Is it highly overrated in 2022? Does it have some value for certain populations? Or do I just have the whole damn thing pegged wrong? All wrong. Let me know in the comments and let's get some productive discussion going. And that's all I got, guys. Please remember to hit the like button before you go. Subscribe to my channel. Leave me some love in the comments. All that good stuff. Be sure to sign up for my Patreon. I just released a new article on there this week. It's called Progress Comes in Spurts. It's an interesting piece that I really enjoyed writing. Hope you guys enjoy it too. Check out on CareEliteFitness.com for online coaching and training programs. And no matter what your endeavor of choice, keep training hard. I will catch you guys next time.